It's the second to last Outlander episode this season, say it ain't so, and boy is it a doozy. Roger gets into some serious spiritual conflict after finally making camp in a Mohawk village. While Bree tries to get down to the heart of the matter, that would be, forgiveness, forgiveness, even if, even if, Roger, doesn't love her anymore. We pick up precisely where we left off with Roger receiving a great A B done from the Mohawk villagers as walks through a gauntlet. He is going to remain a captive, not one of them, and they pull at his beard and give him a pet name in their language, which he later learns means dog face. Richard Rankin, you are not a dog face, I promise. Far from it. Back in Wilmington, Fergus tells his fellow regulators that Myrtle was arrested alongside Bonnet. They immediately fear the governor won't grant Murtaugh a fair trial and he'll be hung. They resolve to get him back somehow. At River Run, Lord John tells Bree of Bonnet's capture for charges of smuggling, piracy, and murder. The news takes her off guard, but she wants to know if rape can be added to his charges. Lord John says it will only bring shame to her, and that in the end, Bonnet will pay for all of his crimes. He's condemned and will hang next week. Bree tells Lord John she wants to see him, but John refuses, insisting she's in no condition to travel, not to mention, witnessing an execution isn't good for the baby. But she doesn't want to watch Bonnet die, she wants to talk to him. This is all because of the letter John brought her from Jamie. He advised Bree not to seek revenge, but, for the sake of her soul, to find the grace to forgive. Bonnet carries the seeds of his own destruction but he cannot die by her hand. She has to see Bonnet so she can try to forgive him and free herself of the trauma he inflicted on her. Always morally upright, Lord John has no choice but to acquiesce to this request, particularly when he can feel the baby kicking in Brianna's womb. Roger has been put to work by the Mohawk, though he's still tying his string to keep track of the days. His arm is in pain and in a sling and a young Mohawk woman with a baby speaks to him in French and gives him herbs to chew. He wants help escaping, but she insists he needs to heal first. The Mohawk man who speaks English, Kay Herton, warns her to stay away from Roger because he was sold by his own people and therefore can't be a good man, which, honestly, is a fair point. Lord John and Bree make it to Wilmington for her forgiveness mission. She's struggling with her size and missing her mother which it turns out, so is Lord John. She hopes her parents return before the baby is born, and John assures her he knows they'll do everything in their power to return Roger to her. You are impossible not to like, she tells John. And we couldn't agree more. Roger accidentally offends Kay Herton when he points and speaks over him, which is not Mohawk custom. He pushes Roger to the ground, and at the pleading of the young woman with the baby, drags Roger away to what shall henceforth be known as the Punishment Hut. He questions Roger on how he became an outcast, and Roger admits it was a mistake that arose out of his loyalties to a woman. Roger is shoved into the Punishment Hut right on top of his bad arm. He chews on the herbs for the pain and realizes there's another man in there too. The man introduces himself in French as Father Alexander Ferry Gaelt. The priest tells him he is in a village called Shadow Lake in the province of New York, which brings Roger to tears. Fergus has a bunch of thimbles and bowls out on the table, plotting to break Murtaugh out of jail. Marsley realizes what he's up to, and much to Fergus' surprise, is extremely supportive of the plan. They ask themselves catched, what would Claire and Jamie do? They decide to free Myrtle with the help of the regulators and use the trouble as their cue to take Jamie's offer to leave Wilmington and make a home on Fraser's Ridge. They share a tender moment, making them the best couple of this episode, where they basically pledge to face down the devil himself together.